You basically cover every tech stock besides yeah. Apple. But do you think this news from Apple will bring down the rest of the tech market? For those companies that have got exposure with high price points in China, I, I don't know why this wouldn't be a pretty reasonable read. I, I don't know how much of this is Apple specific, though. I guess that's the real question. Is the Chinese economy slowing down? It seems like that's a pretty broad, broadly under, uh, broadly understood. Now, I look at the, inter the other FANG names, their exposure to China probably for bad reasons, is actually pretty limited. I think in a long term, a long scheme of things, I, I think they wish they had a lot more exposure to right. China Facebook than they have. Facebook is blocked have. in China. Google, Google left China. Twitter is blocked in China. And All Netflix, your companies. Yeah, Amazon does have a presence there. Uh, Priceline, eBay, there's a few companies that have a presence there, but nobody's got more than mid single digit percentage revenue uh, contribution coming from China. So I don't think we'd see it there. We got a high priced, you know, large exposure company like Apple to China. They're going to see it before anybody else does. And they may only be one of the few people to see it. Okay, so to get a little bit more detailed, if you actually look at Apple, it's pretty cheap trading at 11 times earnings, whereas Google 19 times, Facebook 16 times. Are these other companies overvalued and do you think there will be a reckoning for them because of what's happening in the broader market. I think we've seen a reckoning already. We've seen a sell-off, uh, especially in Facebook. Uh, but I think the unfair, if you will, the oversold situation is probably most uh, acute in names like Google and Amazon, where fundamentals haven't changed at all. There's nobody bringing down estimates on these names. Growth at Google has been extraordinarily consistent. This has grown 35 straight quarters that's unheralded in financial history at around 23% year over year, and yet the stock is trading at just a small premium to the market. So I think these are unusual secular growth assets. They're scarcity growth assets. The, um, I think they provide very good uh, risk reward opportunities here. I'm not sure this is the best we've ever seen, but this has got to be in the top quartile of buying opportunities. So was Mark Zuckerberg right not to sell any shares in the last quarter? Yeah, and what the company is right to do is they announced in the middle, of beginning of December that they were going to do a $9 billion extra uh, share buyback authorization. They should absolutely be doing that. Put your money where your mouth is. You've got tons of cash. So does Google, by the way. Both of these companies should be amping up their share repurchases now. But what about regulation and sentiment? Yeah. People hate Facebook right now. Well, I'm not sure they <laughs> hate it, uh, but they certainly are in. Look, I, I'm going to. There's gonna, distrust. Yes, there, there is. There is distrust. They have to earn it back. Uh, by the way, do you, uh, this I keep thinking about Netflix. You remember three years ago when they had the Quickster fiasco and they tried to cause uh, the prices to, they, they raised prices and they lost subs for two quarters. They went through a year or two. The stock did a meltdown a year or two before they regained trust. That's probably. And then they stopped calling it Quickster. <laughs> Yes, uh, but I, I think that kind of brand, you know, you can you can damage brands, but they can be fixed. We look, we've our survey work has shown declining satisfaction scores uh, uh, for uh, both advertisers and consumers with Facebook. This stuff can be fixed, but it's going to take time. We think it will. And by the way, I think the risk reward is very attractive on Facebook. I get all the controversy around it. I just think that's more than priced into so, the stock right so here. So where's the reward coming from? I mean, they haven't started monetizing WhatsApp yet. They have started monetizing Instagram, but Instagram, you could argue, has some of the same problems. Possibly, but uh, I'm sorry, we just you just uh, quickly went over WhatsApp. Now, wait a second. This has got <laughs> over a billion users. There are multiple messaging apps. This is uh, Facebook's advantage is the portfolio that they own. The two largest social media assets in the world and the two largest messaging applications in the world, the latter two are barely monetized. Don't you want to own that asset before they start monetizing? Unless you think they can't structurally be monetized. I don't think that's true. So I think you have a company with uh, a lot of controversy and they brought they, they shot themselves. I don't know how many feet people can have, but however many they have, they shot them in all of them. But I think the, the uh, fundamentals can stabilize in the back half of this year, and I think you buy the stock before the crowd does. Okay, so let's talk about Netflix, because yeah. uh, you say that you, you're, you're optimistic about subscriber yes. growth. Uh, SunTrust is not optimistic about subscriber growth, and we just spoke with John Klein, uh, the president of Ealings, who's the former president of CNN. Take a listen to what he said okay. about Netflix. Winter is coming for Netflix, you know, in the form of much more competition and a much more expensive operation moving forward. They're going to have to be creating many more original programs moving forward because all of the studios in Hollywood are pulling their movies and TV series off of Netflix. And what Netflix is facing is something that I talked about on this network before, which is they may be the AOL of OTT. Could Netflix be the AOL of the over-the-top era? That's like a that's a great line. I, <laughs> I completely disagree. And the reason is this is the scale game. So whoever has the most subs can afford to buy the most content. That's the point that's missing about this winner argument. Uh, there's escape velocity, and Netflix has already reached it. They have six times as many paying subscribers as anybody else. That means that whenever the next you know Fast and Furious 13 comes out, they can bid more economically, bid more for it than anybody else can. And by the way, they are now becoming the biggest buyer of content out there. I don't think studio 
studios do not want to sell to the biggest buyers because then they'll have to answer to their own shareholders. Netflix, I think, is in the catbird position here. So what about Amazon and regulation in general, not just as it applies to Amazon, but also Facebook and Google? We know that Congress, we know that Washington is taking a closer look at all of these tech companies. I, 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 don't, I don't know if we're at peak, Greg. And look, these assets are so big now, especially Amazon, Facebook, and Google, they should be constantly scrutinized given the size of the assets. So you're but saying just, more regulation is coming, peak no, regulation? I, uh, no, I, I, look, we just had two massive fines placed against Google in the last three years, like eight to nine billion. In Europe, not in the U.S. Yeah, you know, I don't think you'd see fines in the U.S., but you could see regulation, absolutely. But by the way, did it impact Google's growth rate? No, we haven't seen anything undermine the value proposition of Google for both for either advertisers or consumers. And by the way, you want to go after Amazon for market share issues, it's half the size of Walmart. So you'd have to first bust up Walmart before you'd want to go to bust up uh, uh, Amazon. And I think it's, I hope we're not in an economy where we're going to bust up people just because of size. So anyway, I, I look at uh, Amazon as an extremely innovative, successful company. And by the way, they seem to be much more politically astute than these other companies. I mean, they are the ones that implemented the wage increase. I think they're a little bit savvier and smart in terms of where they uh, position their headquarters, et cetera. So I, I think the regulatory risk of, of all these names is probably least likely with uh, Amazon. So Apple has generally outperformed the broader market. You wonder if that will continue in the midst of this news. Do you think the FANG stocks in general will outperform? In 2019? Yeah, I or think, not? Yes, I think that's an out of consensus view. I think people believe that tech is over, Fang is over. I've, I've lived through these cycles before, so have you, Emily. These things can wax and wane. But the fundamentals, if they stay intact, the stocks will come back to reflect the fundamentals. And these are premium growth assets. You can't find this kind of growth anywhere else, this kind of consistency of growth anywhere else. Market will come back to these names. All right, Mark Mahaney, always good to have you. RBC Thank Capital you, Markets. We'll have you back many times before the end of the year, but we're going to check you on that at the end <laughs> okay. of the year, I promise.